Welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with special guest, Georgia Foster, who's here to share with us how to drink less in seven days. So is it time you start making some positive changes in your life? Well, today's show is just for you. So Georgia Foster is a renowned hypnotherapist, best-selling author, international speaker, and the creator of life-changing programs. She specializes in alcohol reduction and emotional overeating. Her signature programs, Seven Days to Drink Less and The Weightless Mind, have helped over 100,000 people improve their emotional relationship with food and alcohol. So welcome to the show, Georgia Foster. Thank you for having me. Very excited to have a chat with you. Well, what an honor it is to have you here and to talk about this. Why is this a topic that you are really interested in? Well, I, you can obviously hear I'm Australian and Aussies are known as big drinkers. Uh, And when I was young, I used to drink and overeat because I never felt good enough. I had a lot of anxiety. And when I was, when I turned 28, I had the opportunity to go and live in the UK. And what I discovered along the way was um, I went to California and trained in this amazing psychology, which I'd love to share with your audience today. And when I learned this particular theory, um, I decided that I wanted to be a therapist. But I didn't really know how because I felt that this particular training, I didn't have the confidence. And then I went to London and I discovered hypnosis. I went and trained with one of the biggest, well, at the time was the biggest college in Europe. And I just fell in love with hypnosis. But what was interesting as I was hypnotizing myself and building my my client base, I myself was changing my relationship with me. And what I discovered was that I actually didn't need to overeat and overdrink because my self-esteem was improving. So I combined my psychology with the hypnosis. And the clinic grew quite quickly. I had a few corporate clients. And I then, you know, very much in the background was building a base of people who were, you know, many lawyers, many um, people in the financial district of London who had alcohol issues, but they didn't want to quit. So, and I got that because being a big drinker myself, I thought, "Mm, okay. So it happened organically, but what was really interesting, the the, the techniques that I created from the psychology and the hypnosis, I was getting such great results with clients that I just knew I was onto something. And a lot of these people could have been put into the, the box of AA, but I, in my heart, knew that that didn't seem to be so. And then it just kind of grew from there. My passion hasn't stopped. In fact, it's stronger than ever because I know alcohol is a big issue for a lot of people. And controversially, I believe that that most people are not alcoholics. They become emotional drinkers. And that with hypnosis, you can start to train the brain to have a better relationship with yourself so that you're not reaching for that drink as your confidence pill or your stress management pill or your sleeping pill. Well, I think that's really a profound way of looking at how and why people drink. And so with the work that you've been doing, the people that you've been in contact with, what is the number one thing that they say that stands out to you? Well, in terms of the results, you know, I've got my life back. Um, I feel I'm not in the doghouse with my wife or my my husband. I think that for me, you know, the psychology, I mean, I'd love to share with you the reason why I think that the the, the process is so powerful for people is that the psychology that I'm trained in is about a Jungian psychology and it's the theory is that we're all made up of many parts or sub-personalities and there's one particular personality trait called the inner critic and the inner critic is the part that's the doom and gloom and oh what did you say in that meeting today everybody thinks that you're overweight or you drink too much or eat too much and what's interesting in particular about alcohol unlike food or cigarettes or any other habit that we might want to change, is that alcohol 
shifts the brain chemicals. It changes the structure. And the most prominent chemical is dopamine. So when people are drinking alcohol, what actually occurs is the critical part of the brain shuts down. It goes away. So people aren't hooked into the alcohol. They're hooked into the feelings and the emotions that it drives. So many people will say to me, Georgia, you know, I really, I'm shy. And then I say, you know, we have a conversation about what's going on in your head before you drink and guarantee the inner critic is at play. So, you know, things like you'll be boring unless you don't drink or you'll be not as much fun or, you know, a lot of people have an issue being, you know, intimate sober because the inner critic says you're fat, look at your cellulite, you won't relax, whatever. So a lot of people don't recognize that this one voice, this inner saboteur, you could call it, when we drink alcohol, because it goes away, people have had, they've got some space, they've got some reprieve, they've got some just, you know, a moment to be present rather than the inner critic, you know, judging them the whole time. So what I say to people is, well, you know, I'm not worried about the drinking. The drinking is the secondary stage. You know, everybody, people don't choose to overeat. They don't choose to overdrink. I mean, occasionally if you go to a beautiful restaurant and the wine's amazing and it's a birthday party, they go, I'm going to overindulge. That's cool, you know. I mean, I myself have the odd hangover, but it's more to do with the fact the regular drinking, if it's causing you grief, understanding the negativity that's driving that will be a very big sign that person has anxiety issues, self-esteem issues. And that's really what the program Seven Days to Drink Less is about. It's, it's about understanding the dialogue that drives people to drink and how to change that. So is that why hypnotherapy is a great way to help break these unhealthy habits? Well, a lot of people feel very like the stage hypnosis. I mean, that is not real. That's all pre-prepared. There are, to be honest, there are people who are more susceptible to a deeper state of hypnosis, but everybody is hypnotizable. And when, you know, when you go to sleep at night, for example, you go between being awake and asleep, but that bit between that like 20 minutes, that window of time, I mean, some people take some longer to go to sleep, of course, but that little window of time once you close your eyes is the hypnotic state. It's also called the meditative state. It's the alpha theta state. And in that particular space, your mind is more pliable and adaptable to change with the art of particular suggestions, working on working with emotions, positive emotions. You know, for example, if somebody has a fear of flying, um, which I've treated hundreds and hundreds of people for fear of flying, is that mind, because of the inner critic, has created a sequence of events that is fictitious. I mean, they may have been in a in a in a moment where things were a bit scary. For example, somebody who's drinking too much or eating too much is there was probably a time in their life where there was a lot of vulnerability and they used alcohol as that particular function to squash down the anxiety or to let go of the fear. But what's really interesting with the power of hypnosis, you can shift deeper, more ingrained habits that feel hard to shift consciously. And there's been so much research on, on hypnosis. I mean, it's quite extraordinary, the data on it. But what's really beautiful is the neuroscientists, you know, the people who study the brain, have confirmed that Hypnosis is one of the most effective ways at creating unwanted habits. Now, just to put in the mix of that is, I mean, I call myself very much a progressive therapist rather than regressive because there will have been a time when that person created a moment where alcohol was deemed the right way, the, the, the best solution to fix the emotional problem at the time. But the mind's very lazy. So it, then the next time that same emotion comes along, it says, right, well, we've, we've felt this before. We've experienced this fear before. What did we do the last time? And in a nanosecond, the mind will scan the brain and say, oh, we drank. Now, I'm not saying that means people will drink at nine in the morning. I mean, my, my typically my audience of, you know, 50 plus they're hardworking, fully functioning people in society. They're not sitting on a park bench 
change. They've got, you know, lives that are full. Um, I mean, some people talking about retirees, et cetera. But what we know with hypnosis is you can shift particular habits that in the conscious world are very difficult. Or some people would say, Georgia, I don't have any willpower. And I'm saying, but, you know, willpower doesn't exist. You've got to get the deeper part of the mind to match what you consciously want to achieve. And when they marry, when they get it, when the deeper part of the mind is experiencing it, and that's what you can do in hypnosis. You can literally train your brain to think that you're actually there in the situation. I mean, it's a curious concept, isn't it, for a lot of people to get their head around, but it's quite extraordinary, the results in just 25 minutes, how you can change that emotional conditioning to train the mind to have healthier coping strategies so people aren't reaching for that glass or two. I really like how you explain that. It makes so much sense. And I think for a lot of people, they're going, okay, you know, I really resonate with that inner critic that you were talking about. What are some of the other personality types that you, the different personalities that we can look for? Well, there are two in particular that go hand in hand that love hanging out with the inner critic. The first one is the perfectionist. Now, the perfectionist is a beautiful person who has high goals, really high achiever, very uh, driven and they would be the type of drinker who is all or nothing. Like they can abstain all week and feel like really proud of themselves. But when it comes to the weekend, they will be the typical binge drinker where they and they drink fast and furiously. And the reason why they drink the way that they drink is not because they have a drink problem. It's just they're so driven in their sober life that their mind, because we all need to take time out, we can't always be driven 100% of the time, that when people drink, the perfectionist, it, like with the inner critic, it goes away and goes, oh, we don't really care anymore, you know, and then the perfectionist steps away and then that relaxed, chilled out person who's happy to be present then becomes more present in that person's mind and body. But what's interesting about the perfectionists, because they are all or nothing drinkers, they tend to be the drinker who will quit. They'll tend to be, the, they'll go, I mean, there's a big sober movement now, and I think it's fabulous. It's not my personal choice, but I know it's a lot of people's choice. And and it's the right thing to do for, for a lot of people. But being sober or a perfectionist actually is, um, a, they don't trust themselves with alcohol. They can't find the middle ground of drinking because once again, it comes back to the mind, there aren't the right references there. And if you don't have the right references, then it's going to be very difficult to change that behavior. So some people just end up quitting because it's just too hard to try and find that healthy style of drinking. And then there is the perfection, sorry, the, the pleaser that is aligned with the perfectionist and the pleaser has a different character trait there. They have an issue with saying the word no. They have poor communication in sober sober moments. They feel very strongly they've got self-esteem issues and high levels of anxiety and they drink to to run away from looking after everybody else, right? They're nurturers, they're homemakers, they're they're people who, I say a pleaser is not a psychic, but they're very em empathetic. They are very good listeners. They're very good free therapists to the world. But they also get very burdened by over-pleasing and they get very tired emotionally. So they tend to um, be a regular heavy drinker. They will probably, like a, a perfectionist is really good at alcohol-free days, but a pleaser tends not to have alcohol-free days, or if they do, it's under duress. But what's also quite damaging for a pleaser, they will drink to communicate. So they often become aggressive, and a passive-aggressive behavior where they drink to communicate, and often with the wrong person at the wrong time and end up in the doghouse and end up with high levels of anxiety in the morning with the inner critic going ballistic and saying, why did you say that last night? What did you do? And so there's a lot of anxiety around both drinking personality traits under the umbrella of the inner critic. But I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, a lot of people maybe 
listening to this and saying, oh, but I think I'm a bit of both. And I'm saying, well, that's completely possible to be a combination, uh, which is great because it means you are a high achiever, but you're also very good at nurturing people. But equally, both personality traits are when you start to perfect intuition, because I believe that the part that says, I want to drink less, that part I call the intuitive part, that part that has that, you know, that ignites a sense of there's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. And that part is very much the savior, not just about drinking as well. You know, it's that personality trait that knows that there are just some people on this planet who are not that supportive to your sense of self-worth. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with world-renowned hypnotherapist Georgia Foster on Drink Less in Seven Days. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Are you a coffee lover who wants to make a difference? Look no further than Fire Department Coffee, a veteran-owned business that gives back to support first responders in need. Each batch of coffee is freshly roasted right here in the USA by a dedicated team of first responders and coffee experts. So when you enjoy a cup of Fire Department Coffee, you're not only drinking high-quality coffee, you're supporting members of your community. Start your day with a coffee that gives back. Visit firedepartmentcoffee.com. That's fire, D-E-P-T, coffee.com. Hey, pay attention, everybody. Amy Vaughn and myself, Dutch Mendenhall, are hosting an event. Have you ever felt like the wealthiest in America play by a different rule book? Even if you earn well, make money, invest wisely, educate yourself, there is an invisible barrier. It separates you from the financial security enjoyed by America's elite. The economic landscape changes every day. The wealthy elite know how to stay ahead of it because we play by a different rule book. At InvestWell Summit, we'll share all the plays and we're making it to win. Spots are going to sell out fast at InvestWell Summit. So get your butt to investwellsummit.com and secure your seat now. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special, when you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place. Here is where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with world-renowned hypnotherapist Georgia Foster on Drink Less in Seven Days. So I understand you do go into the different personality types. Can you share with us the personality type of the pleaser personality? One of the traits with the pleaser personality is that they tend to draw critical people, narcissistic personality disorder. You know, pleasers tend to attract others who have issues themselves. So one of the things I notice when you when I work with people who have strong pleasers is the relationship dynamics change around them. For example, they might have a lot of heavy drinking friends who don't want them to drink less. So, and this is with the perfectionist as well as the pleaser. So I often say to my audience, you know, choose your audience. Don't tell the world that you're worried about your drinking. 
because all they're going to see after the program is that you're happier and more optimistic. And one of my one of my clients from my London days, because I was a, I had a, two clinics in London for like 23 years, and the amount of people, beautiful, all my clients, just amazing people. So many people say to me, what's really interesting, now that I've done your program, is that I'm really tasting what I'm drinking rather than gulping it because it's not for emotional, medicinal purposes. And so I think really what I want to share is underpinning all of this is a self-worth issue. Like I need to belong. Why do I not belong? Am I good enough? Why am I not feeling good enough? And all of those are such a big part of the, the core, the backbone of the program. And, you know, as I said, I like to drink. I like my, my nice Chardonnay. And I feel very strongly that alcohol is given a bad rap when there are so many other things on this earth that, you know, I mean, there's joy in wine, there's pleasure in wine, there's pleasure in beer, there's pleasure in tequila. But, you know, depending on how or why you're drinking it is what makes the difference. I love that. I think that's the best way I've ever heard this explained when we look at why people drink and really break that down. And and for those folks that say, well, I have really high anxiety, that's why I drink. I mean, what do you say to those people? Mm. Well, anxiety is 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 a habit. And I think what people, you know, it's it's very hard sometimes to understand when you, and I know I know what anxiety is all about. But anxiety is high levels of negative thinking. And what's interesting about the inner critic, it's very good at being your own personal psychic. It's got that crystal ball happening there and it's saying, oh, this might happen or that might happen or watch out for this. And if somebody's trained their mind to be on high alert, and this could come from, you know, being judged by people or coming from a critical family background. But anxiety is the inner critic. I mean, the inner critic is there to forewarn you. But if it becomes your truth, then it's going to be very difficult to, you know, make progress, create change. So really, you know, I had this uh, wonderful, and my client who's happy for me to share this story, many years ago, I had this very much a sex in the city style New Yorker. And when she was in London, she would call me and say, Georgia, can I have an appointment with you? And I can come come and lie on your couch. I say, yes, you're no problems at all. And she said, I've decided now that the only difference between America and Britain is that in in Britain there is a pub on every corner and in America there's a pharmacy. And I, I've never forgotten what she said. And, you know, I think it's very true. Don't get me wrong, I'm not anti-medication. I'm not anti-people taking things that support their emotional well-being. But I think that a lot of people, I mean, America and Australia are heavily medicated with anxiety, anti-anxiety medication, antidepressants, SSRIs, et cetera. And, you know, what's interesting about people understanding that the inner critic is really holding them back and that they can train their mind to have a healthier inner dialogue, the whole world opens up and a new, new opportunities arise. I mean, it takes courage. Of course it takes courage. But I think ultimately is you know, courage, as as a very famous yogi has said, you know, it's not the life you have, it's the courage that you bring to it. And sometimes that courage is all it takes to get you into a new space where you realize, I don't have to feel this way. This doesn't have to be me. And anxiety, once again, is a habit. Wow. I'm sure a lot of people are going, okay, wait a minute, anxiety is a habit. So how do I work through this or overcome it? How how to, can they get to a place where they don't have as much anxiety or they drink less or they eat less? Well, obviously it does take training. And I'm very much, I want to stress, not all hypnotherapists work this way, but I'm very much along the neuro neuroplasticity that we are, our brain can change, it's malleable and pliable, and that you do not have to regress to make progress. Now, that's just my opinion, and I see great results from that particular, you know, that experience. But I think what's important for people to know is that we create habits around everything. You know, no one's born 
I mean, I believe that self-esteem is something that we need to learn. We're not born with it. And whether it's anxiety over eating or over drinking, there will be a habit in there, you know. And I always say, if you consciously can't seem to make that change, it means that emotionally the particular experience, whether it's eating or drinking or whatever it is, is a protective mechanism. Like there's something about it. Like, for example, you know, why do people put all the weight on after they've lost all this weight? It's because there's something about the experience of being slimmer. There's something about the experience of of um, drinking less or quitting drinking that makes them feel vulnerable. And it's the vulnerability that's really key here. And when somebody emotionally feels a sense of vulnerability, then the mind will find its best answer. It's not the right answer. But once again, the histrionics of life, the library of people's emotional minds will pull out things that are familiar to the mind that even may be detrimental to that person's well-being, but will actually be the mind thinks it's clever and it's giving that person the right answer. And that's what I'm saying is, you know, we are not born with these opinions. We learn them and we can unlearn them and relearn other things. It does take practice, of course. That's why the program Seven Days to Drink Less has um, hypnosis content in there because, you know, that's where the changes are made. But ultimately, anxiety is negative thinking as well, low self-esteem, all are about that person feeling that the inner critic is their strongest voice. But when that starts to go into the background and, you know, people train their mind to live authentically, knowing that the inner critic will badger, you know, the inner critic comes out when we want to make a change. It comes out when we're not feeling well places like that, you know, but if you're, if you know it's one voice, it's not all of you, it means that there's scope, there's an opportunity to train the mind to be in the other part of the brain that loves fun, that loves laughter, that loves joy, that loves feeling safe, that loves going on new journeys where you don't know what's around the corner, that loves excitement. And these are all Parts of people's personalities, when they've got a strong inner critic, never get a chance to come out until they drink. That's what's really interesting about it. People drink to have fun. People drink to relax. People drink to have more joy. People drink to be more present. And that's all a sign of a strong inner critic. So you mentioned that your program, Seven Days to Drink Less, has some hypnotherapy in it. Can you share a little bit more about that program? Sure. The seven days to drink less program is a seven day program. And every day there's a talk from me and it's really what you would, I mean, it's more than you would experience in the clinic. So every day there's a hypnosis track that I like people to listen to. And then after the talk, I explain why, why that recording is what it is. And then starting through the program, explaining the science of the mind, explaining what we really do know now about the power of the mind, and then going into the psychology training on day two about the inner critic and the pleaser and the perfectionist. And then going through each day, um, I teach people a particular technique. It's called the future technique, which really helps people create the right references moving forward when it comes to not just about drinking, but beyond that. And I also include their alcohol-free day section because I know a lot of people haven't had an alcohol-free day in a while, maybe since they had knee surgery or had to get up for an early morning flight. So it, all of the, the things that I feel are the most important part of people, A, understanding the power of their mind, but B, how incredible the opportunity of hypnosis is. Over seven days, people can really start to create beautiful, healthy habits Now, the program's got um, a 60-day money-back guarantee because I want people to know I really believe in what I do because, you know, the power of the mind is incredible. But the great thing about the seven-day program is it's about self-esteem. It's about reducing anxiety. It's about improving healthy, sober coping strategies. It's about having lovely, alcohol-free sleeps and really enjoying them. And that is, in a nutshell, what the program is about over seven days. Do you have other programs that you'd like to share with us? Sure. Well, I have my Weightless Mind program, which is 
the same balance of content, but for people who are emotional overeaters. And then I have a beautiful program called Emotional Resilience Training, which is for those who have maybe don't have food issues or or um, alcohol issues, but have a lot of anxiety. And I created that program with my sister, who is a breath expert. So we do a lot of breath techniques. I know breathing is very popular these days. Uh, and we've been working with breath for quite some time. So it's combination of hypnosis. You know, I really feel very passionate that, you know, once again, as I said before, self-esteem is something we need to learn. We're not born with it and you need to practice it. So all of the programs that I have are really training the mind to welcome, to embrace change through hypnosis. So where can our listeners connect with you and learn more about your programs and how to drink less in seven days? They can go to my website, which is georgiafoster.org. And that's Georgia Foster as in Georgia State of America, Foster as in the beer.org. Well, Georgia, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, Georgia. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your programs and book, Drink Less in Seven Days. To learn about this program and all the other programs that Georgia Foster offers, please visit her website at georgiafoster.org. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we... Make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.